So you want to buy cryptocurrency, but you're not sure how it's done. Well, you've come to the right place because a few weeks ago, I wanted to buy cryptocurrency and I didn't know how to do it. In this video, I buy cryptocurrency by downloading an app on my mobile phone. I screen capture everything so you can see how it's done in case you want to invest in cryptocurrency yourself. I explain each step, the coins I bought, why I bought them, and then update you on my portfolio's performance a few weeks post-investment. Hola, timid investors. This is Tara from the channel She Saves, He Invests, They Travel, offering personal finance strategies and travel tips that work for ordinary people. Please remember to like and subscribe. And also, click on the links in the description below. And if you stay until the end, I have a bonus for you. All right, timid investors, vamonos! Con animo! This video demonstrates how to open an Uphold account. There are other apps that allow you to buy and sell cryptocurrency, but this video does not cover those apps. Uphold is an app that allows you to buy and sell cryptocurrency without having to mine or enter an impossibly long password. Compared to other crypto apps like Coinbase, Revolut, and Robinhood, Uphold has more national and digital currencies and a good trust rating. However, I thought the fees were quite steep for trades and certain activities. You'll be able to see the fees that I'm charged in the video. If you want to learn more about Uphold, check out the video linked in the description below. The video you are watching is mainly a tutorial about how to download the app. I created my account, linked my bank account, and funded my account. Chose coins and what I chose and why. Click on the App Store app in your mobile phone. Once in the app, search for Uphold. You should see a green icon with what looks like a weather balloon. When you find the correct Uphold app, click on it to download. Once the Uphold app finishes downloading, click install. Sign into iTunes with your username and password and open the Uphold app on your phone. Once the app opens, you'll have to set up an account. Scroll down below the green button that says continue with email to the green sentence that says don't have an account, sign up here. You'll need to enter your information into the fields. This part is pretty self-explanatory. You'll need to type your email, create a password, select your country, scroll down to the drop down menu, select your state, and accept the terms and conditions. Make sure when you are creating a password, you follow all of the rules for lowercase, uppercase, special characters, spaces, etc. Don't forget to accept the terms and conditions by checking the box and clicking next. Enter your full legal name. Enter your date of birth by selecting the month, day, and year from the calendar options given to you. Then add your phone number by selecting your country first. This will automatically populate your country code. Once the country code is in there, go ahead and type in the rest of your phone number, including your area code. Check the box certifying that your information is correct and click next. Open your email and look for the uphold verification email. When you find it, click on the verify button inside the email. Return to Uphold. Click OK, got it. Click Not Now if you don't want notifications. Now click Let's Do This. Click Deposit Now. Click the down arrow to select the deposit method. My method was to link a bank account. Click the green plus next to banks. Select your bank's currency. Mine was the US dollar. Select a deposit method. Enter your social security or taxpayer identifier number. Add your bank's billing address. For many of you, that'll be your home address where your bills are sent. Click Continue. Select your bank. Enter the username and password that you use to log into your bank account online. Don't worry, it's secure.
Verify your identity by having your bank send you a text message with a code inside or call you. Once you receive the text message, if that's the method you chose, enter the code. Press continue. Choose an account from which to fund your investment. Type in the amount of money you want to invest for your first investment. My first investment was Bitcoin. You'll see that at first I thought I wanted to invest $1,000 and then changed my mind and switched it to $2,000. I'm not going to say much about Bitcoin because it's the most famous cryptocurrency and it's been in the news a lot because it has increased in value from less than one fraction of one cent per coin to its all-time high of more than $57,000 per coin on February 21st, 2021. Make a note of what you bought in the note field by typing the name and the purchase price. Click done, click confirm, check the box, and click confirm. Notice how I spent $2,000 on Bitcoin, but only $1,978 is in my account. Uphold charge $21.27, or 1.1% in fees. Click on your funding source again to purchase the next coin. Enter the amount you want to spend. Scroll down and select the coin you want to buy. I chose to buy Cardano. Cardano is a cryptocurrency network and open source project that aims to run a public blockchain platform for smart contracts. Cardano's internal cryptocurrency is called ADA. The development of the project is overseen and supervised by the Cardano Foundation in Switzerland. It was founded in 2015 and supposedly is the first to be founded on peer-reviewed research and developed through evidence-based methods. I like it because supposedly it's designed to scale with minimal energy requirements, so it's a lot better for the environment than Bitcoin. Check the box and click confirm. Now we're off to purchase our next coin. Enter the amount of money you want to spend. This time we're buying XRP. Again, select your funding source, enter the amount, and select your coin. Scroll down or search for the coin using the search bar. XRP is a digital asset that allows cross-border payments by a company called Ripple. XRP can be exchanged for different currencies. Supposedly, its ledger can settle transactions in three to five seconds, so it's faster, less costly, and more scalable than any other digital asset. XRP's value dropped precipitously because the US Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, filed a claim deeming XRP to be an unregistered security. XRP has been suspended by many platforms because of this suit. However, Ripple is now being represented by former Ch SEC Chair Mary Jo White, who argues that XRP is not an unregistered security. If Ripple wins, then XRP is probably very undervalued. The next coin I bought is Dogecoin. I know, I didn't really understand what I was purchasing. It sounded familiar though. I asked Chris what he thought and he said, sure. I'll let Graham Stefan explain to you what Dogecoin is. Guys, it's Graham here. So I'll admit, I never thought I would be making this video, but here we are talking about one of the biggest meme investments of 2021, Dogecoin, which has so far this year gone up 1,500% in price from 0.005 cents all the way to 7 cents at the time I'm making this video, fueled by viral tweets, internet memes, and lots of comments with rocket emojis in them. And even though this entire currency started off as a bit of a gag, the recent price movement is making everyone question that maybe this is something we should start to pay close attention to and that perhaps it's going to be much more than just a meme from 2013. I recommend you watch the rest of Graham's video. There are a limitless number of Doge coins that can be produced. I'm going to sell this coin as soon as it returns to the price I bought it at, which is close to its all-time high. I'm embarrassed. Okay, enough of that. On to the next coin.
I bought DigiB. DigiB is a cryptocurrency that powers Digibyte. Digibytes are digital assets that cannot be destroyed, counterfeited, or hacked, making them ideal for protecting objects of value like currency, information, property, or important digital data by utilizing the five parallel cryptographic hashtag al algorithms, whatever those are. Go ahead and remember to make a note of the coin acronym, which is like a ticker symbol, and the purchasing price. I pay just over five cents. Click confirm, check the box, click confirm, and on to the next crypto. For this next one, I chose Zill, or Zilliqa is a cryptocurrency that aims to use sharding to solve the scalability issues facing many blockchains. Sharding is the process of dividing the mining network into smaller pieces or shards that process transactions in parallel. It was developed in 2017 by academics, entrepreneurs, and engineers at the National University of Singapore. Apparently, it uses eco-friendly mining, so its carbon footprint is tinier than other currencies. Preview deposit. Again, make a note of what you bought and the price you bought it at. Click confirm. Check the box. Click confirm. And last but not least, I chose UPCO2, aka Universal Carbon. It's the world's first tradable carbon token on a public blockchain. Supposedly, by buying this coin, you help preserve rainforests. The tokens are tradable carbon credits that companies and individuals seeking to offset their carbon footprints can buy. It's not a very liquid asset, and it's going to be super volatile until the carbon market matures. If you want to learn more, you can click on the link in the description. Preview deposit. Remember to make a note of what you bought and your purchasing price. Click done, click confirm. Check the box and click confirm. And because you stayed into the end, here's your bonus. I wrote down my thoughts about the process and I'm just gonna read them to you here. There are other apps in which you can use to buy cryptocurrency, such as Coinbase, Revolut, and Robinhood. I tried to open a Coinbase account, but the app recognized that I was an American in Spain and wouldn't let me finish. However, my American friend who lives just down the street was able to successfully open Coinbase and use it to purchase cryptocurrency without a problem. We applied about a month ago, maybe even longer, to use Robinhood to buy cryptocurrency because we're current Robinhood users. We are still waiting to hear back from Robinhood. It's been weeks and weeks and weeks. Let's say the value of your cryptocurrency drops. What you can do is you can start purchasing more because you can view it as being on sale. If you keep purchasing crypto, when it drops below your initial purchasing price, that's called averaging down because it brings your averaging purchase price down. So performance, how's it going? It's been a few weeks, I've let my money sit. What happens? Well, a week after I bought all the crypto, it shot up to a $400 profit in value. And then it came crashing down the next week to negative 200. And now as of the time of this recording, it's negative 50. So I spent 2,500 purchasing it and the value of my portfolio is worth 2,450. Of course, there aren't any real losses because I haven't sold yet. Remember, you haven't lost any money until you sell. Also keep in mind, you you shouldn't be buying something that you don't understand. So I just did this as an educational exercise because I wanted to learn how to buy it. 
And I used an amount of money that if it drops, I really don't care because I don't need it to buy anything with or it's not gonna stop me from paying bills. Okay, so if you open a crypto app after watching this video, drop a comment below. Tell us how it went, what app you used, what crypto you bought, and please remember to like and subscribe. We hope this helps. I'm now bracing myself for some constructive criticism. Let us know in the comments which video topics you wanna to hear about or if you have questions or just tell us about your favorite crypto. Make sure to check out my video on purchasing index funds via Robinhood. And check out Chris's video that gives an overview of cryptocurrency in general. Remember to like and subscribe. Hasta pronto, timid investors.